bit of confusion up, help answer some questions. And then at the end, I'll leave time for some questions as well. So bear with me, I'm gonna share my screen and hopefully I can get this to work. So it says the host has disabled my ability to share the screen. There you go. Thank you, okay. All right. All right, can everybody see this with me? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. So that was my little introduction. So things we're gonna go over is what is the lymph system anyways? What does it do? And then what happens when it's not working? What's lymphedema? How does it feel? Who's at risk? When is it most likely to occur? How do you even treat it? And how can I reduce my risk? This is a kind of old picture, but it still does a great representation of our arteries and our veins. Most people are familiar with that. The heart pumps blood through your arteries and then it goes back through your veins. But there is this lymph vessel that is in the middle. It is actually quite larger than that. And it takes up everything that the blood from the arteries drops off to the cells. So any waste, debris, the lymph, set, lymph system picks it back up, it filters it, it cleans it, and it dumps it back into our circulatory system. It's our own little recycling unit. Here's a lymph node on the right. Each lymph node serves a particular body area. It has on and off ramps, and it's usually embedded within our fat. It's arranged in groups. So if one lymph node gets something and it can't break it down, it sends it to another neighboring one and asks it for help. It has lots of different protective functions as well. It helps with our immune system and it helps with uh, thickening our lymph when we need it. So if you look to the right, this is our whole body. There's not one area that does not involve our lymph system. There are superficial areas and there are deep areas, but these green dots, those are the main clusters of lymph nodes. What's not included is that you actually have a lymphatic system in your face, neck, and head. These dotted lines, those are territories. And each lymph node is responsible for the area within that territory. If you have breast cancer, then the lymph nodes removed along that armpit area, all the territory that it was responsible of draining, it has difficulty draining once they're removed or damaged. So we kind of know what the lymph system is now. Let's go into a little bit more detail. It helps with removal of cellular debris. So that's when the cancer cells, bacteria, and viruses come into play. It plays a role in fluid balance so that you never have too much fluid or too little fluid. It helps with fat digestion, cell nutrition, and it's responsible for producing something called lymphocytes. And those are white blood cells, which produce B and T cells, which are essentially our antibodies. They help fight infection. It also helps with blood coagulation, transport of proteins and fats and minerals, even hormones and waste products, excess water, and even it's in our intestines as well. So our whole system works kind of like a bathtub. You can put the water in and the faucet that the water comes out of is kind of your red artery on the right. The drain at the bottom is kind of your left blue veins on the left there. Your lymphatic system is almost like that little valve at the top of the bathtub that when it gets too full, it regulates it. 
it prevents overflowing of the bathtub. So now that we know what a lymph system does, then what is lymphedema? It's actually an abnormal collection of high protein fluid just beneath the skin. It's swelling, which is also synonymous with the word edema, and it occurs most commonly in the arm or leg, but anywhere in the body where you have lymph. It can include the breast, trunk, head, neck, or even the genitalia. It only affects the region of the body where the lymph nodes were damaged or removed. So when you have chronic swelling, it usually occurs after a trauma to the lymphatic system. For example, when you've had a surgical removal of your lymph nodes, that lymph node that was responsible for draining that territory, it's gone. And so the other lymph nodes surrounding it they, their job is to try to learn to drain that new territory. When the system gets overwhelmed, you develop the chronic swelling. And any damage to that area can cause this. So that includes radiation, or sometimes I've even seen where surgical incisions are long and they block the drainage simply because of the scar tissue that they develop. You are at risk any time they take out lymph nodes. Even if it's only one, you have a risk. It doesn't mean that you will develop it, but you have to be cognizant about your situation and your surroundings. So there are other reasons why you could be at risk. Uh, due to poor diet and obesity, sometimes where the weight sits, it sits right on top of those lymph nodes and they don't get a chance to properly drain. The, the, for the reason of this PowerPoint, we are discussing secondary uh, lymphedema, uh, which is as a result from breast cancer, surgery, or radiation. There actually is a primary lymphedema, something you're born with, uh, but it's simply that you're just not born with enough lymph nodes. So that's different. So in regards to this presentation and for a cancer background, secondary lymphedema, um, when is it likely to occur? Well, at any time after the lymph nodes are removed or the area is damaged. It's most likely to occur within the first three years after breast cancer treatment However, the risk is lifetime. If it were to occur, it's usually slow and steady. I've only had a few patients where the onset was fast, but it was due to a result of a fall um, and a quick, uh, unexpected jerky type motion. Here is a research study this was a little over a thousand women and they followed their lymphedema, uh, whether or not they would produce or have lymphedema or not have lymphedema. And they followed them for about 15 years. If you look at the chart on the left, the bar graph, after two years at max with lymph dissection and radiation, it's a little under 25% of the women develop lymphedema. If you look at the 15 year mark, it's up to 45%. Now that seems scary. However, they did not indicate whether or not these women had good education on how to reduce their risks prior uh, to them actually developing the lymphedema. So keep that in mind, even though this seems kind of scary. So how does it feel? Well, um, at first it feels like swelling. Uh, it starts a little bit distal, meaning it's more in your fingers or your hands. Patients report a fullness, heaviness, achiness, fatigue, sometimes a burning sensation, pins and needles, 
Um, sometimes clothing doesn't fit, the jewelry feels too tight. I would say that any symptom that you have, if you feel it and you have lymphedema, it will always come about in the same set of symptoms. We do not have a, a, a cell receptor that tells us, hey, I'm swollen. We only have cell receptors that tell us if, we're, if we have achiness or numbness and tingling, pins and needles, or heaviness. And so that's why it's really a mixture of different symptoms that you feel. One important thing to note, it's actually not muscle soreness. And you could kind of extend your leg and bend it, so just kind of straighten your leg and bend it back and do it a few times till you feel a little muscle fatigue. And that way you can kind of differentiate between what is a real muscle soreness and does this feel like it's that or is it something else? Once you have lymphedema, uh, you would want to see a qualified certified lymphedema therapist. Those initials are CLT. It ensures that you're getting a therapist that has the proper background, can make sure that they are looking out for any type of uh, risk factors such as cellulitis or things that need to be taken care of right away. They do a process of a light massage, which is called a manual lymph drainage, compression, skin care, exercises to help push the swelling out, and general education to reduce the risk of flare-up. This complete decongestion therapy, it consists of two phases, the reduction phase and then the maintenance phase. So when this all started, the gold standard was to do this wrapping technique that you can see on your left. I love to wrap, it's great therapeutic for me, uh, but it's often not convenient for the patient. So since then, they have developed this type of reduction kit to the right. And they have noticed that the type of reduction you can get in your arm with using the left bandages, you can get the same amount of reduction in the right in almost two weeks less of use. So it's a faster reduction kit meaning that you can get into your second stage a lot quicker. Usually people are more compliant when they hear that and they're willing to put up with it for a little bit because both of these are fun, but they're only temporary. These are the end goals. The one on the right is a glove. The one on the left is called a gauntlet. Both have an arm sleeve, but the hand piece is different. It would depend on how, what grade your lymphedema got to, whether or not you would need either. I will say the one on the left, the purple one, that one I usually recommend to all my patients who are at risk. It is not a position of any lymphedema network or uh, organization or group. However, after discussing with lots of doctors, we feel that it is more important to reduce patients' risk than to wait and see if just one day it flares up. And we'll talk a little bit about that later on. So I wanna go over the signs and symptoms again, because if you get anything out of this lecture, I really we want it to be, what should I just kind of have in the back burner of my mind to be aware of? And what should I do if I notice those symptoms? So this is broken down further into early signs and later signs. Early signs are the feelings of heaviness, tightness, of weights or a pulling on the affected limb, jewelry or clothing just doesn't fit anymore, feels a little tight. Um, and sometimes there is swelling, but patients don't think too much of it because if they raise their arm or if they go throughout the day, it goes away. 
but that's still an important thing to note and to call a doctor or a lymphedema therapist to make sure you are on the right track to preventing it from getting worse. Later signs, are, the swelling that just isn't going away. It's not going away if you raise your arm, not going away when you wake up in the morning, it's just there. Sometimes you can even see the skin change. It hardens or it distorts. It doesn't look like it has the normal curvature. You really should be contacting your doctor or a therapist if it gets to that phase, but that phase is pretty far. So if you don't treat your lymphedema, it just gets worse. It's a chronic condition. If I explain it to people that it's like you have diabetes, you have to constantly monitor your blood sugar levels. Most people get it, that it's not just something that will go away overnight. It's something you wanna be aware of. And if you do have it, you have to be treating it. It will progress and get to worse stages if you don't. And prior to uh, going on Google and searching images, call your doctor because Google can be brutal if you aren't searching for things carefully. So I highly suggest don't Google images with lymphedema, just talk to your doctor and that way they can guide you down the right path without added unnecessary fear. So this is the top result. Oh, sorry, my Siri is helping me. <laughs> um, so what you do, uh, if you think you are developing it, talk to your doctor. You can even call us and we can schedule you an evaluation. However, we are not the only lymphedema therapist. There is a large network of lymphedema therapists within uh, the whole LA area or wherever you are. Once you have lymphedema, it is very important for you to stay active and exercise. The physical activity with the compression actually helps reduce your swelling. You will always want to wear the compression appropriately as sometimes there are night garments, sometimes there are day garments, and sometimes there are garments that you kind of shift around throughout the day. It is safe to return to a workout program. However, you need to discuss with your you need to discuss it with your therapist because if you push too soon too early and without the proper precautions, you can actually make it worse. In general, you just want to have a good healthy diet. Uh, your sodium intake can change how much fluid you're retaining. However, what is more important is that your diet in general is healthy. You don't want to get to an obese state where just the added weight alone is contributing to making the lymphedema worse. What you wanna do is moisturize daily with a low pH lotion to prevent dry skin, cracking, and potential infection. So bacteria, they do not like a low pH lotion. And if you put it on daily, if you have lymphedema or to try to prevent lymphedema, it means that those lymphocytes that are left in your lymph nodes to serve as that arm, that they will still have a fighting chance to get rid of whatever bacteria are still left in the area. One thing, if you do have lymphedema, and you have not discussed it with your doctor or a therapist, you want to be aware for in, about infections. They can develop into something called cellulitis. So that is a serious condition and you have to call your doctor immediately. And what you want to look out for are map-like red borders. That's warm, flu-like symptoms. And you can draw a black line around the border, and if it crosses that line within an hour, that's when you talk to the doctor. The treatment is antibiotics, and it's treated quite easily. However, you want to catch it. You don't want it to spread. That is only if you have lymphedema. So 
garments are not really covered by insurances. And so lymphedema therapists usually always make a plug to advocate for your rights and try to get, uh, this is the one, one bill that's in the Senate or one bill that's uh, they're trying to pass. Uh, and it's to try to get insurance coverage to cover that, to cover the garment. Ideally, if everyone had a garment, the reduction risk would be enormous. Uh, we wouldn't be seeing patients who didn't know that they were at risk and developing severe lymphedema later. Uh, a lot more people could get away with not ever having to wear garments all the time. So ways that you can reduce your risks now, if you do not have lymphedema, but are at risk, you keep the skin clean, same thing, use a low pH lotion. You avoid tasks that are gonna cause cuts, scrapes, or just wear gloves. Because if you remember, since they took out that lymph node, you have less lymphocytes, or less little army guys to help fight the infection. And that could come from a simple cut. So you wanna reduce your risk of even getting those cuts. It doesn't mean that you reduce things that you love to do like gardening or pruning roses, which is the majority of my lymphedema patients. Um, you just wear gloves. <laughs> you want to try to avoid extreme temperatures because your body is trying to maintain a nice even temperature. If you're too hot, it's gonna push fluid to try to cool down. If you're too cold, your body's gonna push fluid to try to warm up. If you have a love of going to the beach and going and skiing, it doesn't mean that you can't do it. You have to just take precautions. You have to wear your garments just in case. You want to see if you can avoid constricting clothing. Any tight rings, rolling your sleeves up just to go outside, any type of tight clothing can cause a tourniquet effect and it forces your lymph system to work harder. Make sure to keep it's all 16 hours. of your doctor's appointments. When you are maintaining a good relationship about your health with your doctors, then they too can also be aware of any changes. Sometimes it's hard to see changes if it's just you every day. But when you're seeing somebody on a regular basis, they can pick out those changes a little bit more clearly if you're having difficulty. So I'm gonna circle back around to the garments. Um, there are, there's not an official position uh, within the lymphedema network or other organizations, whether to or to not wear garments. However, with my discussion with, with doctors, we just like to prevent it as best as we can. That means that if you are at risk, you could easily go to uh, any store that sells lymphedema garments and buy a sleeve and a gauntlet just for, for prevention. It would be something you would use if you want to go on a plane and because the altitude is different, the atmospheric pressure is different. And that means that the arm, your arm could potentially swell. It doesn't mean it will, but it could potentially swell. Or if you do really do wanna to go to the beach or really do wanna go um, skiing, you may want to wear it just out of precaution to try to prevent it from swelling. And it's easier to put it on one day, do what you love and then take it off the next than have to wear it every day for a lifetime. And if you do have a strong workout routine that you were really into prior to radiation, chemo, um, see if you can talk to a lymphedema therapist or a cancer rehab specialist. Both are well-trained in how to ease you gently back into the routine that you love so that you can continue to uh, live your life the way that you want to. And we can see if we can get these links for you guys and just in case that you want any more information. 
Um, there's a podcast, there's the lymphedema national network that I was mentioning throughout. And there's even like a research uh, network and they come out all, with all sorts of fun stuff all the time. So now let's open it up to the questions. Do we have any questions? Yes, I have a question. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Um, I, I have been aware of this and panicked about it since I was first diagnosed. And it didn't seem like most of the women that I talked to even realized, because I, I would say I'm losing my breast and I'm losing my right arm. That's how I would look at it. Because mm -hmm. all of my life, you know, that's my, my I'm right-handed and I do a lot of physically um, demanding things like the fire clearance work. I have, I'm responsible for a lot of that sort of thing and dancing when you're, when you're um, spinning. Uh, and so I, I asked my, the, Surgeon, I haven't had my surgery yet. So <laughs> coming close, not wanting it. But I asked the surgeon, she said, I don't need to worry about it. That's like 5% chance. That's back when they did the auxiliary um, lymph node dissections. And somebody else said, yeah, the Sentinel is a lot less risk, but she had it down at 5%. She said, no, 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 you just live your life like normal. I'm thinking that's so contradictory to what I've heard anybody say that's, that's in lymphedemia like the educational world, so. And I did so, have one person tell me, stop worrying so much that it wasn't as bad as I thought. So I need, I need to hear like. Sure. Yeah. So in, in a way they are correct. And in a way it's not 100% correct. They are correct in the sense that the older surgeries, the older type, which are very rarely done, uh -huh. they used to take out more lymph nodes and they used to disrupt a larger area of the body that did cause an increase in uh, lymphedema. Mm -hmm. However, once you take out any lymph node for yeah. any reason, it increases your risk. Yeah. Uh, I do not know um, the studies on if one lymph node is out versus a bunch. Mm -hmm. However, it's probably due to the fact that each person has a different amount of lymph nodes and a different size of lymph nodes. Oh. So in one arm area or auxilla or armpit, somebody could have 40 lymph nodes and another person could have 10. So if you take out seven in both those people, mm -hmm. you're more likely gonna have lymphedema if you're the person who only had 10 to begin with. Yeah, so, that makes sense there's no way to tell for sure how many lymph nodes you have. Yeah. It, it's known that you are at risk, so you wanna take precaution. Okay, thank you. And I hope the day for other women to not ever have to have lymph nodes taken out. I think there should be some other way they could biopsy them or, or look at them with some imaging, so <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Are there any other questions? See your hands. There we go. Yes. I have a question. I have yes. a few questions. Can you hear me? Okay. So yeah. um, you mentioned that if you do go to the beach or you go skiing, if you don't have lymphedema, that you recommend having, uh, getting, getting, wearing a sleeve. Uh, same when you go on an airplane. Is that correct? But that's tightness. That's what I don't understand. You say not to wear tight clothing, but that sleeve is very tight. So the difference is, is that the sleeve is not creating a tourniquet effect. It is a very graded pressure from the tip of your hands all the way back up to your arm. And it's a unified pressure. When you have a constricting area from rolling up your sleeve, it is an isolated area. And it is a tourniquet effect, meaning that it is all the way around the arm and only in one spot. So if you think of it kind of like traffic, it's a low bridge and they can't get, the lymph can't get underneath that bridge. When it's nice and smooth, it can easily go all the way back up. When I discussed the skiing 
and like beach type climates. It's in the areas where your body is going to be a lot colder. You could go to the beach now and it, it's actually not bad. Your body temperature is not going to get really high, but if it's hot and your body is going to, temperature is going to get high, meaning your heart is pushing a whole bunch of fluid to try to cool it down, that extra fluid pumping could push you over to having lymphedema. It's not guaranteed, but it can happen if your body's really hot or really cold because your body wants to try to maintain a, like homeostasis or a nice uh, temperature. Does that help? Yeah. Um, and then when you say tight clothes, what about like when you work out or go biking that you're wearing like leggings, not on your arms, but like on your legs? So it only applies to the area that's affected. So if you had lymph nodes out in your auxilla or your armpit area, wearing something tight on your legs, that's not gonna work, that's not gonna affect your arm because the lymph nodes that um, kind of where your hip is, those lymph nodes are responsible for your legs, not your arms. So it's okay for workout things to be tight lower. Um, you wanna be avoidant of tight clothing around your arm, however. I have a question. Oh, I, is she done? No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, my sister has um, uh, lymphedema. So, what uh, what kind of exercises would you suggest that the congestive exercises that you could recommend? And how do you massage? Because there's a certain technique that you cannot just massage it. You know, there's a way of massaging it. So I would recommend for her to call her doctor and get referred to a lymphedema therapist because unfortunately that's not a question I can answer across the internet without having seen her. And it's a very long answer. The training that therapists go through to do that, it's long. The massage itself takes at minimum an hour to perform. And that's when it's done correctly. So the exercises, they should always be performed when she's wearing her garments. And the massage, it should always be performed by a lymphedema therapist. There is a modified version that we teach our patients to do at home, but it's still a little bit too complex for me to teach you across. Um, but I would be more than happy to see if we can get her referred to somebody so that she can safely return to working out and safely perform a massage to reduce the fluid. No, but she's in the Philippines. The problem is she's in the Philippines. Yeah, so... So they do um, have a therapist there though. Uh, they, they do, um, they're all over the world. Um, I would say, see if you can have her, her oncologist, they should know where lymphedema therapists are. And if they're still having difficulty, there are some videos on the internet she can watch that can be helpful. But <sighs> again, she needs kind of an assessment to ensure that the proper techniques are being performed for her. So when you say that low pH lotion, what kind of uh, what example of that low pH lotion? Eucerin is a very popular one. Uh, if you have a lotion that you absolutely love, call them and ask them, is the pH low? Is it below seven? If it is, then it's a good one for you to use. I've had several patients that they don't want to give up their brand, and it turns out it's still a good brand. So, you so, can common, but you can check your own. Um, are you selling that reduction kit? Are you selling reduction kit and also that compression 
sleeves? So we do not sell them. We just make sure that they are fitted correctly and that they are the right size and that patients know how to put them on and put them off. Do you know, would you recommend a place to buy those? And you can just go to lymphedemaproducts.com and that should be available anywhere. However, you do need a therapist to make sure that you have the right kind and that you're putting it on correctly because you can make it worse with a lymphedema kit if you are not doing the compression equally on every strap. Oh, okay. Yeah. I had a uh, lymph nodes removed on my neck. So you said the risk of having lymphedema. So on my neck, where is the lymphedema going to be in case, you know, it happens? So it can be in your face and your neck. Oh, okay. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. I had a, I had a question. Um, actually, I had three short questions. Okay. Um, yes, this is Manaz. Uh, the first question is, you talked about the temperature. Um, I like to take really hot showers. Uh, is that something that I should avoid? Or can I just like avoid the side that the arm that's been, you know, affected? So we usually tell patients that if you really want to take a hot shower, don't let it be longer than 10 minutes, like a normal shower length. Because even if you do not put the warm water on that arm, your entire body temperature is increasing. So therefore your body is going to try to bring it back down and it will push fluid to help it cool down. It's impossible to avoid every single risk. So we usually modify it with saying, take hot showers, but just don't take too long. Okay, thanks. The second question I had was uh, regarding the sleeve. Um, it's, uh, it's not clear to me like when I should be wearing it. I mean, clearly, like you said, if you're flying, you wear it. But other than that, like if I'm using my arm to do exercises or to do work, you know, in the kitchen or um, what, when, when do I decide I have to wear the sleeve on everyday activities? So remind me, you do or you do not have lymphedema? I, I do not have, but I want to try to... <laughs> prevent it. So the main things that you, main areas that you would want to wear it is, of course, flying, any extreme temperatures where your body would try to either cool itself back down or heat itself back up, and working out. If you're just cooking, if you're just, you know, doing a little bit of gardening, then there's no real need because your body and your muscles are used to a certain level. If you normally do 30 minutes of gardening and one day you really want to do four hours, you should be wearing it because that's not a normal activity for your muscles and your body. And you don't want to kind of scare your system into uh, flaring up just because you want to work in the garden longer than normal. Okay, and then my third question, uh, thank you again, this will be short. Uh, I don't wanna take everybody else's time, but my third question was, um, you know, how do I monitor? I mean, I think you know, you talked about like tingling of fingers or um, I'm a little bit like anxious, like, you know, I keep looking at my arms, I keep look, comparing my two arms and my two fingers. Um, is, there, is there like, sh should I make measurements of, you know, I mean, it's, um, how do you, how do you like monitor it to catch it early in case it's happening? Because by, I mean, the tingling is very qualitative and it's difficult, you know, to notice it a lot of times. Uh, like, is it a, I don't know, a ring that you try on every day <laughs> to see if it fits? I mean, what, what is the, mo what's the best way to monitor if, it, if it's happening to you and catch it early? Well, things that you mentioned, those are great ideas. You can easily take a tape measure and measure your wrist, measure a finger, and if you're ever concerned, check it again. And make sure you 
remember whether or not the night before you had a large meal with salt in it because it could easily change that, that next morning and there's no need to worry yet. Um, it is common for a little fluctuation to occur within our body, especially within our diet. Most patients after they have their diagnosis of breast cancer, surgery, and even sometimes after treatment, the oncologist will recommend just an eval for education purposes on how to do exactly what you're concerned about. The majority of it, I actually already went through in this video and there are handouts on the websites that were listed towards the end. The National Lymphedema Network has a page that just tells you what to look out for, which again, it's make sure your skin is good and intact. You're avoiding overdoing exercises. You're avoiding temperatures that are extreme, wearing a garment when you're flying in the plane and maintaining a good relationship with your doctor. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate your... Hello. I have a few questions. Yeah. Um, I do have lymphedema okay. and I do really, uh, I just want to let the other ladies know um, when I started going for physical therapy yeah. for my lymphedema, um, I wasn't monitored enough. So on my opposite arm, I wound up getting a rip rotator cuff. I ripped my bicep and I had a few other rips. So I just want to always let the, the ladies know that um, although I thought the therapist was excellent and they taught me a lot how to do myself, you know, uh, massaging and I went for uh, a while um, just to just be really careful and when they're doing it and if they're left alone, you know, maybe they shouldn't be. But anyway, uh, that was not a good experience. But my question for you, I actually have several questions. So um, first of all, so I noticed that you gave, uh, my sleeve that they gave me only went from my wrists up and up to here. So I'm just curious as to, should I get the one that, you know, starts lower? And when it reaches the top, where exactly? Because once you get to the top, it kind of tends to roll, you know, like a, like it's tight. So I'm just not sure, does it go here or here? See, like none of that stuff was explained to me. Oh, um, I'm sorry that that experience wasn't uh, as optimal as it should have been. The part that is on your hand, that's actually a separate piece. And okay. there's a part of it that overlaps with the sleeve on your wrist. Okay. The top part of the sleeve, it should come up to where the inside portion of it underneath your armpit is as high as it can go without folding over. Okay. The top strap, if you are having the experience of it rolling down, you can get sleeves that have silicone on the inside, just that top little portion, and it won't roll down as easily. It'll stay put. So is it supposed to go straight across from your armpit like here, not over your shoulder? Most sleeves go straight across from your armpit. Okay. However, there, there are some that go higher, but they usually include a strap that comes across your chest. If you do not okay. have that strap, you don't have to pull it up uh, over your shoulder. Okay. My uh, next question is, so can you or can you not ever give blood on that side? Um, so <laughs> ideally, no. If you have a needle or any pin prick to that area, that is an open wound. Okay. Even with the best care, your body has to heal it. It will send more fluid to the area to coagulate the area to create a scar. It will send some lymphocytes to the area to make sure there's no infection. But all that extra work is extra lymph load on the arm and it's a risk. That's okay. also why you're not supposed to do a, a blood pressure 
test on it because that okay. is a restriction ever of- right yeah. once once you have it that's it forever right you have those restrictions correct okay and my uh my last question i hope is when you do wear it to go on a plane do you have to put it on two hours prior and leave it on two hours after or so yeah you you don't have to put it on you can put it on as soon as you get on the plane um i would say just wait till you are finished and going like home before you take like wait till you're home to take it off um because your body could have a slight delayed reaction but it's it's more important than anything just to have it on when the atmospheric pressure is less because the garment makes up for the atmospheric pressure that is missing and i don't know if i could ask another question i don't want to I'm sorry. So can you lift a heavy item or not? You know, because I had uh, the issue with lymphedema on one side and I have the rip rotator cuff and everything on the other side. So my arms, I've just totally lost all the muscles. So I'm just curious as to, uh, do you just start with a little bit of weight and just gradually work up and just never lift anything super heavy? So there actually are no lifting limits when you have lymphedema. It's exactly how you describe though. You have to wear a garment and you have to start out very low, very low, very slow over a long period of time because you're monitoring changes. Okay. Um, but as long as you have the garment that is sufficient, it's doing its job, it's keeping your arm reduced. And as long as you're slowly working up your tolerance, which is a little bit slower than if you did not have lymphedema, uh, so it's slower than a normal workout routine. And that's why I said, make sure to ask like a cancer rehab specialist or lymphedema specialist on when it's appropriate to increase your weight. But the good news is that you can lift heavy weight again. You just can't go from zero to 50. Okay. And if you do go inside of a steam room or something, should it also, should, is that something you should totally avoid or just stick it to a few minutes? Well, that one's a hard one. Um, I would say, please avoid. Uh, uh, I guess you could try with a sleeve, but it's it's a risk. That's a, that's okay. a bigger risk. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. I know I had a lot of questions. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> so Susie's cool. are out also sitting oh, in. Jac- see that one again. I'm sorry. Sitting in a jacuzzi a hot bath those are not good either so a hot bath is a little bit different because that doesn't usually get as high as a jacuzzi if you can lower the jacuzzi temperature but it's still a risk um i mean i had one lady she wouldn't give it up and so she just put her arm outside had her sleeve on and she she was okay but i can't guarantee that it won't swell even with what she did it's still your rest of your body temperature raises. Exactly. Everything. Exactly. Says, okay. Okay. <laughs> Are there any other questions? Hello. Sorry, I had my mute on. <laughs> no worries. I saw you talking away. <laughs> Um, I was going to say, I have to say that I was not scared about this before, but now I am. Um, But then on a positive note, I have to remember that my grandmother, when she had a double mastectomy, no chemo, no radiation, she had 31 lymph nodes taken out of her Mm -hmm. and never got lymphedema. Mm -hmm. So that is sitting in the back of my head because I'm like getting more and more panicked as I'm listening to all of this and watching the PowerPoint, but gotta talk myself down off the ledge. So it's, yes, keep that in mind. We never know how many lymph nodes somebody actually has. And it sounds like you have some good genetics. So hopefully you have a lot of lymph nodes that can help make up for whatever had to be taken out. Uh, I hope so too. (laughs) Yeah. I have one last question regarding physical therapy. Maybe you can uh, answer that. Sure. Um, 
is uh, when when do you when do you stop like seeing the physical therapist after like your surgery and um because i'm you know i'm just kind of wondering you know when do you think you don't need physical therapy anymore to kind of pre again this is not for having lymphedema but you know preventing or, or getting the drainage and everything right after surgery so normally we see patients as soon as they're diagnosed we educate them up front about potential risks of lymphedema, how we'll reduce them, and we start them on an exercise program right then and there, before they've had chemo, before they've had radiation. Mm -hmm. And that program is known to help reduce the risks of lymphedema. And because you are maintaining a active, uh, nutrition and lifestyle with that, it helps out significantly with your entire recovery process. Normally, I see patients somewhere around the diagnosis time, I get them on the program. And after about after the radiation, I make sure that they are up to the standards that they were prior to the diagnosis if I was able to see them uh, at that time. And then they go out on their own and they monitor, they continue their program. There is a strength after breast cancer program that we teach and it is designed so that you maintain the health that you have received, uh, the workout routine that you have learned in therapy from here on out. So it could take uh, usually right after radiation. So for wherever the diagnosis is from that about total, I would say maybe three months of therapy, but everyone is a little bit different on how chemo or radiation affects their bodies. And so we make sure that they're safe and that they don't have uh, as many limitations so that they can continue to do the program independently. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I have some questions, sorry. Uh, I, have, I have a question. I have a question about what about brushing your skin with like a awkward vegetable brush uh, brush. So theoretically that works, but there's not much difference in you just doing it with your own hand. So if you want to, it's fine. It's one more thing that you get and you want to have either way works. I like just using your hand because you always have your hand. <laughs> well, I, you know, I, I, um, my um, lymphatic um, physical therapist has told me that you go um, up, but you follow the lymphatic system. Mm -hmm. So from the chest, you go up over your shoulders and then underneath your breast, you go around to the back and then you go up and then you go up your legs and up your butt and down your back. Is that correct? Or do you do it all towards your heart? So that's a little bit more of a complex question. That's not entirely correct because depending on where the lymph nodes were taken out of, you redirect fluid away from those lymph nodes because they are already compromised because you have less lymph nodes there. So if it let's was- say underneath, Let's say they're underneath the armpit. Mm -hmm. So you would actually be pushing the fluid. If it was underneath your left armpit, like you just demonstrated, you would be pushing the fluid to your right armpit and down to your right inguinal area. So that is the area where your hip and your leg kind of meet, kind of like your panty line. So, so you that, go everything from all the way to the left, all the way to the right. So it is to your right armpit, but to your left inguinal area. So your left panty line where your kind of hip meets, meets your leg. Mm -hmm. it, it's a complex question that you just asked, um, <laughs> but it's, it's not entirely, I, I would see if you could go back and clarify since you have a therapist who does lymphatic drainage. Also see if they are a certified lymphedema therapist. 
and yeah. that okay so just go back because i'm pretty sure that they most likely were doing it correctly but i think you got the direction just a little bit uh different and i have that happen all the time it's it's kind of a complex process until you get the hang of it so just go ask them again to make sure I have. I and have are there any um, vitamins that you can have? So there are no known supplements that you can take at this time. It's more just a healthy diet. So everything being nice and healthy and proportioned. No supplements at this, at this time are known to 100% help you, unfortunately. So I just Thank like you. to, I know some of the ladies were asking like, how do you know and stuff? So for me personally, um, I just want to say that there, like sometimes I get up in the morning and just from me hitting my arm against like my, my side, I can feel the swelling like this, you know, you could feel that puffiness kind of. Mm -hmm. And so then you know that you're kind of swollen for that day. I know a few of the ladies were asking, for me, that's, that's kind of how I notice it. And I just kind of like, oh, okay, it's there today. Yeah. I was wondering, um, does the swimming pool also, is it on the list of things you shouldn't do because your body's trying to warm up because the pool water is cooler? I hadn't considered I might lose that too. I knew about the jacuzzi and the sauna. That was hard enough. <laughs> So what's interesting about swimming, if you are actively swimming, your body, um, it, it doesn't get too cold and the pressure of the swimming pool is actually pushing down on you, especially while you move through it. So that's kind of an interesting combination of your muscles mm -hmm. uh, pushing the fluid out but because you have the active movement through the water, the water is actually a pressure on your arms and legs. It's almost as if it's creating a nice barrier or an oh. entire body compression. Well, wow. but you have to be actively swimming with it. And it has to be something that you have done in the past. And if you have not done in the past, you have to slowly work up to that. You don't want to jump into, you know, doing a whole bunch of laps when your body's never experienced that. That zero to 50 could overload the system. But if it's just getting back into your normal routine of nice and swimming, uh, it's, it's fine. And no routine because the gym has been closed the whole time. But I'm well, figuring... I'm figuring the answer might actually be different for me because I am usually colder than most people and hotter than most, like mostly colder, always dressing yeah. like the North Pole. So I'm yeah. thinking I go through the shivers and then I get warmed up by swimming. So, oh no. So the other thing, there are a couple other things. Um, all right, so no AC, no real working heater. So I'm always either hot or cold here. Mm -hmm. um, so even that's enough to trigger it, right? So like I come oh. in and I heat up in the microwave those bean bags and I put it in my chest wall or my head yeah. or something. So um, if, it, if it's something that your body's also used to, I don't, it, it's more the extremes. Um, and it depends on how cold it, it's really getting. And you can always compensate by, you know, having layers of clothing or um, having clothing off and trying to cool yourself down with like the bean spray bottle, mm -hmm. okay. stuff like that, or fans, fans help too. Um, it's, it's more uh, the very extremes, like think jacuzzi, think sauna, um, or yeah, that was a hard, hard hit for me. Was that sauna? I was like, oh. you know? And then when the gym closed, I'm like, great. Okay. <laughs> sorry. So, so then the last one, sorry to cut you off. I just thought, I right. don't know how close we are. And the other ladies might benefit from this because I think is an acupuncture also on the list of things we can't do on the outside. <gasps> so we can't even get off. Okay. So if you think about it, the needle is puncturing your skin. Yeah. And your body has to heal that. It has to increase fluid. It's not a risk that I would say is worth taking 
getting acupuncture on that side. Okay. If you do like that experience and benefit from it. I would say just don't put it on that side. Okay. Well, I think the great news for me is the carpal tunnel syndrome. It actually seems to have worked after over a year. My uh, body was feeling better than ever. And I thought, is it chemo? What's going on? No, I have an re opposite reaction. So thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Tara, I just, I have one question. Yes. Um, yoga, because I've heard several yoga teachers refer to the lymphatic system and certain poses are helpful for that. So do you agree with um, anytime you're moving a muscle, it's moving lymph. So if you're moving a muscle more, um, in theory, it could be helping with moving the lymphatic system. Um, but I don't know about certain positions that does not necessarily make a lot of sense because it's, no, no, I just mean in general that, that yoga would be good and, and, and helpful. Oh, other, yeah. No yeah, absolutely. Okay. Any type of workout routine is helpful. Any type. You just want to make sure it's slow and safe and you're just monitoring things before you try to uh, go too extreme. However, I would not advocate for that yoga that where you sweat a lot. Oh, God, no. I would not advocate for that. <laughs> yeah. No, it's through the cancer support community. Yeah, just, that's probably fine. <laughs> Right. You got Thank me you. on. You got me on slow and safe. So is dancing out like salsa dancing? So were you dancing prior? Yeah, and during chemo. <laughs> so. so you. So as long as you're not increasing or doing um, like a major change in your technique, um, you should be fine. However, if you're trying to learn something new oh. and you're really exerting yourself. Okay. Just you could put on a sleeve just in case, okay. um, but it should be slow, graduated changes. So your body is not overwhelmed with too much of one thing. So is another guide for us, your heart rate, if your heart rate, because I know in some of those, they go so fast. I was completely wiped out one night with one dance. Um, so is that also something we should look at if our heart rate is beating hard? Okay, cool it a little bit. There's there's no research that can give you a definitive answer on that. Okay. Uh, it's more, what were you conditioned prior to? Okay. And if you are making a slow progress, like in cancer rehab, we are very careful to slowly increase the heart rate over time because your heart can tolerate a good cardio workout, but it's a slow, uh, slow, uh, graduated, process to get to a higher heart rate. If you're not okay. used to that higher heart rate, it can overwhelm the system. But if you are conditioned to it over time, you should be fine. Okay. So we all have to start over with whatever we were doing before this pandemic. <laughs> so. okay, thank you. So we'll go back to what you're doing. Yep. So I have a question. What about um, I just oh. Is that good? So I think you cut out. Can you try one more time? Yeah. What, what about sweating? Is that good or bad? So that question was asked earlier and swimming is okay because you have the no, not, pressure. Not swimming. Oh, I'm sorry. Not swimming, sweating, sorry. sweating. Sweating is oh, it, sweating. It's okay. Okay. Yeah. Sweating's okay. Um, it's because that's your body system of trying to cool it down, but you just want to make sure that whatever task got you to that, got you to that point that it wasn't, uh, something unusual or out of the ordinary for your body. Your body should be able to calm itself down or maintain the homeostasis, uh, without difficulty. If it was normal, you're in your workout routine and you've been slowly increasing weights, yeah, you'll sweat a little bit and that's fine because it was a slow graduated process. But if you start to do you know, marathons and uh, you haven't trained slowly and steadily, that can cause an instant 
overwhelming of the system. I have a question. Um, my doctor really never said too much about taking this class or learning anything about it. Um, so I'm just wondering, like, to come see you, does insurance normally cover something like that? I've been doing physical therapy since I had my surgery because they removed some, but um, not a specialist, just a physical therapist. So um, I would say ask your therapist if they have any training in lymphedema because some therapists actually have some training. They just didn't go through the full process to get those initials at the end of their name. Okay. Um, I would double check with them first since you are already plugged in to that area. Um, if for some reason you feel like you have a little bit of information missing, yes, you can call us and you can schedule with us. We do accept um, all insurances. Insurances pay um, for this type of education because if they can decrease your risk of getting it, then it saves the insurance money in the long run. <laughs> um, yeah, so I would say you could call. There's, if I click there, that's our clinic. Okay. Yeah. And you can easily call if you want to. Gotcha. Do they have like those medical bracelets or something? Like how do you know in case of an emergency that yeah. you don't really know, right? Like uh, like if you're taken into the hospital or something, they don't know not to take your blood pressure, not to take blood, anything. Is there something like an alert that? I've, I've seen bracelets. I've seen like, I can't remember. I think one of the gals in our support group had one, but she bought it online. Like not to take blood pressure or whatever. It was like a, you know, medical alert bracelet, but just for lymphedema. There we go. Sorry, I thought you guys could see me all the time. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you could probably custom order one of those uh, bracelets because uh, yeah, like you said, I've seen like don't take blood pressure cups or mm -hmm. something like that. But um, unfortunately, I've seen it where patients have not had that and they have gone to the hospital. The uh, EMTs have cut off their garments and they are swollen after day one of being in the hospital. And I've had to go in there and educate the doctors, educate the staff on this is you have to them bandaged you have to maintain this otherwise it's, it can get worse and we don't want it to get worse um so that would be very helpful if you could find something to let people know ahead of time i want to i wanted to say something because i i can't i don't i couldn't see who it was that was saying it about their doctor not saying anything to them but i had four taken out kelly it was you mm -hmm. um I had four taken out under my armpit and then I had an additional two taken out of my neck area right here last year. And nobody ever said anything about doing whatever it was for preventative. It wasn't really talked about that much. It, I mean, of course I heard the word lymphedemia, right. but there wasn't an emphasis on this is what you could do to prevent it. It was, like there, it was low risk or whatever. But when I'm hearing all this stuff, it, it seems like it's a lot higher risk than was ever told to me. So I, I can explain a little bit about why there is a lack of education on this. Um, first off, usually the oncologist's responsibility is get rid of the cancer and they've achieved their goal. They, um, there used to be not a good uh, continuation of care. And I believe it was in 2015, some sort of uh, ruling came out where if you had cancer, you had to offer therapy services afterwards for education regarding lymphedema, for how to return back to life, to strength, to strengthen, to get rid of the, uh, or reduce your neuropathy, 
and every program out there that had any type of cancer services was supposed to have this sequential uh, referral ability so that the patient got full comprehensive care. And what I think has happened is that it is still rolling out. People are still trying to find ways to plug patients in to facilities to make sure that they get the full care that they need. Um, another reason why this is not uh, often talked about is that there is no lymphedema doctor. You have an oncologist, you have a nephrologist, you have a neurologist. There is no doctor who specializes in lymphedema. You have your cancer uh, oncologists, the surgeons. Some of them can have a further fellowship into how to uh, work with lymph nodes and do further surgeries with lymph nodes, but there's no lymph uh, doctor. And it just kind of gets pushed under the wayside. Uh, one more factor why this is not commonly talked about is the lymphatic system is the last system that has been discovered in the human anatomy. And it just got discovered last century. I, it's that new. And they're still developing uh, surgery to try to help reduce uh, lymphedema symptoms for people who have it. Uh, it's still emerging and new, and they are getting better at having more programs with a fluid transition, but there is still a need. It just seems like such a big part of all of this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just kind of astounded that it, it wasn't talked about more. I agree um, with you. my right. diagnosis both yeah. times. Yes, when I was in San Francisco, uh, we worked directly with the oncologist and we were in their office and before the surgeries, we were giving the patients measurements of their arms and they could take it home and they could always measure their arm just in case in the future they accidentally uh, flared it up or they saw that they were having symptoms. Um, it is definitely an area of need. Definitely. Well, thank you very much for welcome. the invitation. Thank you. You're welcome. Laura, I have one more question. If yes. you are going to get a sleeve for uh, preventative measures, is it best to get the one that goes all the way into your hand or ends at your uh, wrist? You want the, it's called a gauntlet and an arm sleeve. They're two separate. It's two? Yes, it's two separate garments, mm -hmm. but you wear them together. It's designed so that you can take off the handpiece to wash your hands or to do something uh, momentarily, and then you put it back on. Okay, so you recommend the gauntlet and the arm sleeve. So uh, with the doctors that I work with, we promote it as a prevention because I mean, I don't really want to get more patients with lymphedema. I want people to not have it. <laughs> and once you have lymphedema, do you always have it or can it go away? Once you are diagnosed at stage one, it, uh, you always have stage one. Once, you, once you're diagnosed at stage two, always at stage two, it doesn't go back to stage one. Stage three and stage four, it doesn't go backwards. You can reduce in size, but with each stage increase, it requires a higher compression grade of garments to maintain whatever reduction you can obtain. So does that mean we're, when we're diagnosed with it, should they have told us what stage we're at? Or how do you know what stage? Yeah. They, sh they should have told you. Wow, uh, th this this has been so informative. I'm so grateful to have had you today. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> I got an applaud. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and I got a kiss. All oh, you guys are so sweet. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Do you yep. see anything on the on the horizon that might help more than the gauntlet? I just can't imagine trying to put that because the carpet tunnel I'm thinking well that's not something that's going to be easy 
not even um, close. To do. You, can, you could check with some local uh, garment providers and see if anything new has come out. My job is primarily to say you need it, and then they that's what they specialize in just in all the different types of garments. And, and, and I didn't actually, sorry, I didn't actually mean for my question to go to the direction of gauntlet. I just kind okay. of meant when a person, because I was the first time I've heard what you said about the different grades and that you don't go back and the compression being higher. I'm like, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. does it look like there's anything on the horizon that could reverse? A situation with lymphedema? Mm -hmm. there, there, are, there are a lot of surgeries, um, a lot of surgeries. The surgeons uh, who provide this, the surgery, they're, they're, they're there, but they are not a lot of them. There are some in the LA area, there are some in like the major cities, um, and they do perform uh, surgeries that help reduce the lymph uh, build up in the arm, but uh, not everyone is a candidate for it. So you have to be assessed by that surgeon to okay. see if you're a candidate. Okay. And and yep. I did I did I know this is late for most of the women here, but I and I don't remember the wording anymore. I had it copied over into a word doc that I asked my doctor about because it sounded promising. It sounded like it was a way of not harming hardly any. I think maybe maybe one lymph node. It was something like reverse door or back door. It was some way they could put the dye in and they follow the dye. They do something differently, but it didn't, wasn't, I was not a candidate because I'm getting mastectomy. And I think it was for somebody who had um, a lumpectomy. It was something they could do for one, one patient, but not for a mastectomy patient. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure what you're discussing, yeah. but I think it was to try to avoid taking out too many lymph nodes and they sometimes they can trace. <laughs> yeah, it was a way of doing minimal damage, if any, yeah. by yeah. by doing it in reverse order, it goes reverse from how it's done normally. Yeah. So so there's something possibly out there for women after us. <laughs> yeah. They're still they're still coming up with more and more uh, surgeries and research and so that's why I just say try to avoid and try to prevent if you can. And and then it's one less thing you have to deal with. And because you know, hearing you say that, that makes me think, why, why do you suppose an oncology surgeon would tell a patient, oh, don't worry about that, it's only 5% and um, just live your life the way you normally would. And then, and even, even a lymph person, I, I don't know if, what her title is over at uh, Methodist Hospital. She had, could see that I was completely, I mean, oh, really worried. I was. But it sounds like I'm worried to the right degree about this that you, should, something you should prevent. Be, you should be cautious. It's mm -hmm. a lifestyle change, but don't let it take over your life either. You still have to live and do things that are within reason and you know safe. Yeah. Um, I would say the reason maybe because that surgeon potentially read a certain um, report that came out, uh, yeah. but that's not consistent with the rest of the reports, it might have been in a certain type. It is true that the older surgeries, they removed more just in case they had different parts of the body that they uh, had to dig into. And so it interfered with a lot of the drainage pathways. Yeah. So, and the one, kind of like what I said earlier, I was like, he's kind of right in that there is less risk. However, oncologists, they're not seeing the patients years later, like we yeah, are. Right. Yeah. So it's a different perspective that we're seeing. And I don't know if those studies he read were short term, if they were a six month, a two year, I, I can't speak to where he got that percentage. I can only say that um, from the research I showed you, there is there is a risk. So. Yeah. yeah. I also yeah. think doctors, some doctors don't agree with others that I, I have even heard it from my medical oncologist that the chance of, or what she's like, you don't really like have to have your blood pressure taken on the right arm. You could do it on your left arm. And I'm like, well, that's not what I've heard. And so there's a lot of doctors that don't really mm -hmm. believe or say that it's a myth or say that's, that's 
old clinical stuff. Like, you know, you don't well, know. It's what one of the things where it's, it's just a risk. And it doesn't mean that if you get your blood pressure, if you get acupuncture, if you get your blood taking, that you will get lymphedema. That's, oh, I, I always yeah. err on the side of caution. I'm never, That's I'm it. like, nothing's That's ever it. going on in this left arm. Exactly. Ever. <laughs> it's just, I don't care what the doctors say. Uh, trying to minimize risks. That's all it is. And that's one of the reasons why the doctors, um, they're saying, well, you don't have to, or it, it's just, it could potentially increase your risk. So it's easier just to err on the side of not getting it. 100%. Yeah. You so, just mentioned um, acupuncture. Mm -hmm. Are you not supposed to have acupuncture on that side um, because you might bleed or something? So that, that question was asked earlier and my response was that it because it's an insult to the area, it's a needle prick, your body still has to heal that wound. It still has to provide uh, cells and blood coagulation to heal it. It creates an inflammatory response. And even if they clean it really well, your body does have to work really hard to heal those areas and make sure that there are no infections. So I usually recommend, please don't get it on that side just in case. <laughs> Uh, Tara, a follow up to that. How about manicure on that hand? Because I've heard that you're not even supposed to have do a manicure on that hand. So, if your manicurist is using clean, very clean um, utensils, um, I don't recommend any cuts. So, any cutting of the cuticles, it just puts you more at risk. Um, I don't like it when you're soaking in the uh, really warm water. Uh, that that just could increase your risk. But there are some patients that they really need to have their physical appearance look nice so they can feel good. And they will take that risk, but they will choose not to have the cuticles cut or not to put it in the water. And therefore, to them, they're minimizing the risk, which um, I agree, that is minimizing it. You just want to be very careful because if you get a cut and if things aren't cleaned correctly, you could get an infection. And that's that's the risk that uh, most people are trying to reduce. You just have to uh, monitor everything and make sure that you're reducing your risk as best as you can. This is just getting worse and worse. <laughs> So, so Tara, <laughs> generally speaking, the, the are, I mean, my God. <laughs> Tara, for the manicures. Okay, well, so if it had breast cancer on the left, okay, let's not say the manicure. How about a pedicure on that side? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just the hand. It's just the hand. Okay. Right. All right. So we're still able to get pedicures. So Tara, generally speaking, Lord. is it is uncomfortable to wear the suit, correct? So say that one more time. I'm sorry. Generally speaking, from most of your patients and stuff, mm -hmm. I feel that it's uncomfortable. Is that correct? Or perhaps I don't have the right compression, but it, it is uncomfortable, right? It should not feel uncomfortable. No, it, but it usually feels better when it's on and um, patients who have lymphedema they're they feel good to wear it it feels like it reduces the weight the heaviness the um, sometimes even numbness and tingling um, I would talk to uh, maybe your therapist or a compression specialist uh, a store that sells compression garments and see if there's anything else out there it could be that it might be too old too most compression garments they recommend you to get new ones every six months Oh, definitely then, probably. Yeah. yeah. Do they make them for super skinny arms? Five yeah. inches around. <laughs> yeah, they do? Okay. Do they make them for really fat ones? <laughs> yes. They're smart fat. Yes, they do. <laughs> yes. Well, Tara, last question. So yeah. for the neck, um, what exercise would you recommend to prevent the uh, lymphedema? So you, that's another re really detailed question. You would have to go to um, a therapist to uh, go through it. That could take a whole hour or more for your exercises, unfortunately. Um, 
So I would say see if you can get in contact to to make sure that you get what you need. But oh, massage, like super massage is okay. Oh, sorry. How about massage? Is um, it okay? Yes, any type of massage is actually fine. It's oh. fine. Um, but it's not going to affect your lymph system unless it's a lymphatic massage. Oh, I thought we weren't supposed to do massage because I thought like going with the, you can't carry a bag on that shoulder, like your purse, or, especially if it's over 10 pounds and you're not supposed to drag the luggage behind you. I thought massage was one of the things that could trigger it. We could put massage back on the okay list. <laughs> That's fabulous. Um, to, to my knowledge, this sound like they were precautions for right after surgery uh, because you can still do everything that you were doing prior, you just have to work up to it nice and slowly. It can't be all of a sudden you're carrying 50 pounds. Uh, it has to be nice and slow and steady. Oh, okay. Yeah, that then, sounds like it, after surgery. Um, yes, it sounds like a yeah. Well, that's what's, a what's a lymphatic massage? Is that different from the other massage? Oh yeah. The manual lymphatic drainage is something that certified lymphedema therapists perform. Regular massage therapists can be certified in lymphedema, um, but even the ones who are not can perform a version of it, just lymphatic massage. It's usually not as effective, but it's still pretty good. Is that compression sleeve very hot to wear? Because I think that's where my brain goes with that. I keep thinking, Oh, the summers are just getting hotter. There oh, are different, else. there are different brands and you can test out different brands. They have different materials. Okay. Uh, some feel cooler and then others, uh, they're soft. And because they are soft and the compression reduces the excess fluid in the arm, people don't notice as much. There are other materials that they're hotter. So you just play around to see which one suits your needs best. Okay. Can you recommend some ones, a uh, brand that is not hot and softer? Um, Sigvaris has one that is more like a mesh or net type material. Veldip? S-I-G-V-A-R-I-S. Um, they had one for the leg last year. They said they were coming out with one for the arm this year, but I don't know for sure if it's out yet. I was just excited they had it. <laughs> the arm. That's Wait. good. That would be for the arm. So I would contact Sigvaris and see if they do. You could easily contact a ref online and ask if they have one, or they could direct you to a person <coughs> that serves uh, the community and measuring and uh, issuing garments. What's the website again? S I G V A R. S I G V A R I S. And that's the brand name. But there are several different brands out there. So if somebody doesn't like that one, uh, doesn't like the material, if it if it feels hot to them, there's there's other brands too. So what website can I go to find this? So you would open a browser and type that name into the Google search bar and it will pull okay. your website. All right, thanks. You're, You're great. You are great. Thank You're you welcome. so much. Thank you. Thank you very You're much. This welcome, was so Mickey. helpful. Thank You're you. Wonderful. Yay. Yeah. Good job, everyone. Good Thank job. you, Tara. You're welcome. I should probably Thank go you. now. <laughs> Thank you so much.